because I can't make it without you. I can't live without you. I can't do it without you. I need you right now at this very moment, this very time, this very present, this very minute. Come down, Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, at this very moment, at this very time, at this very place, we need your spirit to rain down in this place. Father God, I need your spirit to rain down and rest upon me right now, Father God. Lord, take this vessel of clay, Father God, and hide me behind the cross, Father God. Father God, that every word that proceeds out of my mouth will be anointed and ordained by you. A rhema word for your people for such a time as this. So Father God, we give you all glory. We give you all praise. We give you all honor for all that you're going to do in this place. We bless you. We thank you for your comfort of your Holy Spirit. And we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Always giving glory to God for just choosing an unworthy servant such as myself. Somebody who has so many isms and schisms who can be okay with being naked and not ashamed. I thank him for just choosing me to deliver a word unto his people. We give honor to the headship of this house. Once again, our pastor, our senior pastor, Pastor David C. Camps, senior, amen. Come on, let's give him a hand clap of praise. And our first lady, Teresa Camps, in their absence, hallelujah. I have to give honor to my first lady, my wife, Reverend Tanika Williams. She's about the only one that can bring me down when I'm too high and pick me up when I'm too low. And I thank God for my rib, my partner. I tell people all the time. Uh, if you uh, see me, you see her. And if you see her, you see me. Because God joined us as one. Amen. Amen. I thank God for seeing my mother in and my father in here on today. Amen. Amen. I, I'm a mama's boy, so, you know, when that, you know, when my mama come, you know, I, I ain't ashamed to say it. I love my mama. Amen. And thank God I, I still got my mom. Amen. 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 To all the other ministers, Reverend Rolon, Reverend Beckford, Deacon Dees. I almost said Reverend Dees. Amen. Uh, I think Pastor might have prophetically spoke that last week. But anyway, we're going we're gonna to move on with that. Hallelujah. Amen. To our musicians, thank God to uh for them um hallelujah I, you know the choir you know um i love i love my my faithful group because they here amen and they work hard amen and, and they sound good amen amen i just thank god for them for all of god's children and their respective places for all of you who are here in the sanctuary and for all those who are tuned in on line amen 
Amen. Amen. So, let's go ahead and dive into this word. So, I'm going to read the uh, scripture. Uh, really going to just go with that 48th verse. Well, actually, I'm going to go through the whole thing. But I'm going to read it out of the amplified version. Amen. And it says, the Lord said, then is the faithful and wise steward, the steward of the estate, whom his master put in charge over his household to give his servants their portion of food at the proper time. It says blessed, and then it says happy, prosperous, to be admired is that servant whom his master finds so doing when he arrives. It says, I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But if that servant says in his heart, my master is taking his time and coming. And begins to beat the servants, both men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of the servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour that he does not know. Here I am. And will cut him in pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. And the servant who knew his master's will and yet did not get, I'm going to say that again. The servant who knew his master's will and yet did not get ready or act in, a, in accord with his will will be beaten with many lashes of the that's what it says. That's what the word says. It says, but the one who did it and did these things worthy of beating will not receive, will receive only a few lashes. For from everyone to whom much has been given, for everyone to whom much has been given. Said it again. For everyone, I need y'all to hear that, that's going to be important. To whom much has been given, much will be required. And to whom they entrusted much of him, they will ask all the more. The title of today's sermon is, Your Call for More. I'm going to say that again. You're called for more. I got a little story I'm going to read. And this is uh, probably a familiar story. Some of you may have heard it. But I think it's very fitting for what God is calling for in this time and in this season. And this story is about four people. And the four people are named everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. There was an important job to be done, and everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry about that because it's everybody's job. But everybody thought anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have. Many of us have gone through points and times in our lives where we don't really understand truly what God has called us to do. Well, we don't understand truly the magnitude that you have within the earth. 
we don't always understand that God, the Bible says that death and life lie in the power of your own tongue. In other words, he's given you the power to speak life and to speak death. He's given you so many things. And a lot of times we just don't realize how much God has given us. We believe that we have to have a title, have much. We believe that we have to have a bunch of cars to have much or a big fancy house to have much. We, 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 we believe that we have to have stature. We have to have those things that the world says that you need to be considered someone with much. But yet God has given you so many things that you're technically not aware of because we're too busy looking at what the world says we should or should not have. So this verse that 48th verse, it says, but the one who did not know and didn't, you know, did things worthy of a beating were not received. It says, for everyone to whom much, for from everyone to whom much, from everyone to whom much, I don't think y'all get it. From everyone to whom much. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got much. But the point of it is, is you got to know how much. Jesus doesn't give us gifts and talents and resources merely to spend them on ourselves. He, he gives them to us that we might use them to expand his kingdom and to meet the needs of others, especially fellow believers. Uh, my, my spiritual father, Dr. James W. McGrady Jr., Jesus Peace Ministries always used to say, it's in the house. See, everything that we need, God has already planted in the house. But simply put, if you're not in the house, how can God use you to do his will? Because he's giving you much. You might not think it's much. But he's giving you much. You might can't preach like this one. But he might have given you an encouraging word. You might can't sing like this one. But you're able to use your voice to shout hallelujah. You might not have, you know, you, you might not have all this and all that, the best clothes. But God is giving you a smile that will brighten up a room. You have to understand that God is giving you so many things that you don't realize can be used for his glory. Because our mindset tells us that he hasn't given us much. But you got to know the much. Preacher, what you talking about? What's the much? Well, the first thing he gave you was grace. Hebrews 14 and 4 and 6 says, so now we come freely and boldly uh, to where love is enthroned to receive mercy's kiss and discover the grace we urgently need to be strengthened, to, to strengthen us in our time of weakness. In other words, he's giving you grace. He's giving you mercy. He's giving you love. The Romans uh, 5 and 8 says, but Christ proved God's passion, passionate love for us by dying in our place while we were still yet lost and ungodly. He's giving you love. That love that will uh, cover a multitude of sins. He's giving you life. And that means if you're still here, that you have a purpose. He's giving you health. You might not feel totally healthy, but guess what? You're still breathing. He's giving you strength because God, it says the joy of the Lord is my strength. He's giving you power because he says, look, God is not giving us a spirit of fear, but a power and of a sound mind. He's giving you freedom, even though we don't sometimes take advantage of it. Last Sunday before last, we celebrated Resurrection Sunday. He died to set us free. 
The problem is, is that you don't know he died to give you much so that you can walk in your freedom. The simple is simply put, the Bible says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That means that where the spirit of God is, is God's spirit resting in you? Is God's spirit where it needs to be? Or are you letting it stay over there somewhere where he can't come in and set you free? In other words, he's freed you. He's giving you much. He's giving you a life. That you can use to be a holy sacrifice unto him. I don't think y'all caught that. In other words, you may not have all the money in the world. But when you can praise God through the midst of, of a famine. You may not be in the best health. But when you can still give God praise because he's allowing you to still be here. You may not have all the education in the world. But you can open up your Bible and know that the Bible says that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. If you just remember that God has put some stuff deep down on the inside of you. That he wants you to use it for his glory and not your own. But how can we know truly what we have if we don't really know who we are? I'm going to say that again. How can we know what we have if we don't truly know who we are? John uh, 15 and 16 says, you didn't choose me, but I've chosen you. And commission you to go into the world to bear fruit. And your fruit will last because whatever you ask of my father for my sake. The will give it to you. He will give it to you. He, he chose me. I didn't choose him. He first loved me. I didn't love him. At times I had to ask myself, like L -L Cool J, who do you love and are you for sure? Because sometimes I love myself more than I love God but I had to understand that I had to let go of my love for myself and start going into the love of God which means I can take the stripes that I'm going to have to listen 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 you're going to have some things happen to you because the Bible says you're doing it for his what namesake for his glory life is not going to be perfect he chose you and 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 he chose you to do more he chose you for more he chose you to be that living sacrifice that can walk into a dying world and show them that despite what it is I'm going through despite the mess that I might have despite my past despite my health despite my financial situation I can still give God glory because he's deserving of all praise I can still treat people right I can still walk right i can still talk right i can still do what he's called me to do because it ain't about me it's all about him because it's not about me it's about his glory but the thing of it is a lot of us don't want the more huh. we don't want the more because the more causes you to have to go through some things. The more causes you to have some pain. The more causes you to have to give up some stuff. The more causes you to have to uh, turn the other cheek when you don't want to. The more causes you to have to do some work. The more causes you to have to be nice to people that you want to cuss out. The more ha has you coming in, getting on your knees and praying unto God for people who wouldn't even pray for you. The more. The more, the more, the more, the more. I'm a 90s baby, so 
Biggie Small said it. More money, more problems. When he starts putting more on the inside of you, sometimes the enemy wants to come and he wants to distract you because God has put so much in you that there are people that you got to testify to. There's people that you got to minister to. There's a dying world that you got to show just by the way you walk, by the way you talk, by the way you live, that God is real and he's alive, that he's sitting on the throne. There's things that's in you and the enemy knows that if he can get your mindset to say, look, I, uh, uh, he got you. He knows he's got you. Peter said, first Peter says two and nine. But you are a chosen people. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. God is this. Somebody ought to give God praise for this one. God's special possession. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the wonderful light. I don't really think y'all understand who you really are. He says you're God's special woo, possession. And look, he says if, I, if, 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 if my father mm, will take care of the birds of the air, the beast of the field, if he'll take care of the plants, if you take care of the grass, how much more special are you to him? And how much more will he take care of you? Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? And that's the thing. Do you really believe that he'll take care of you in the midst of your storm? Do you really believe that you are that special. Because see some of us fall into the complex of this story. Some of us just think we're a part of the everybody. We're just a part of the crowd. We just here amongst the billions and billions and trillions of people in this earth. We just hear just a momentary speck of matter in time. Not realizing that you're all much more than just that you're much more than your past you're much more than the things you did or even the family that you were brought up in because you didn't choose them amen but you're more because god said you're more he said that you were more than a conqueror he says look I created you and you are my special possession. So I put something on the inside of you. And you're not just everybody. But we fall into the everybody complex. You know, we, 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 we just want to be, watch this, participants of the blessing. But we don't want to be participants of the mission. Oh, I'm one more time. We, we want the corporate blessing. But we don't want the corporate mission. I, I'm, 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 I got to go there. Because, you know, COVID kind of made us lazy. Yeah, I'm probably going to get some calls on this one. It's all right. But the simple fact of it is we done got used to watching it on Facebook. And we done got used to watching it on YouTube and being able to flip through church services whenever we get ready. But 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 we want uh, we want to use COVID as a reason why we're not coming to church. Um, um, but 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 because we use social media. You put on Instagram that you were at the beach. You put on uh, social uh, Facebook that you were at the party. That you went to the concert. That you did this. That you did that. But you can't come in God's house 
and give God the glory. See, the simple fact of it is, yes, you can praise him from where you are. But the Bible says distinctly in Hebrews 10 and 25, not forsaking our meeting together. I'm going to say that again. Not forsaking our meeting together as believers for worship and instructing. Listen, listen, listen. I can watch a game on TV, but it ain't nothing like being there. I, 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 I can watch somebody sing on TV. I took my wife to see Beyonce and Jay-Z. It ain't nothing like being in there when y'all say start to perform simple fact of it is it ain't nothing like being in church when my God starts to pour out miracles when my God starts to pour out his spirit when my God starts to pour out his blessing we gotta get back to what God has called us to do and get to where he called us to be huh. cause see that verse goes on to say, don't forsake the meeting together. Because it says, as believers for worship, watch this, and instruction. And instruction. I ask ourselves, after pastor come up, preach Sunday, after Sunday, after Sunday, be real. Do we really go back in our Bible and study it ourselves? There's a point in your walk where you got to be honest with you and ask yourself, are you doing the more? We like to come in and get the preached word and then we like to go home. Or go to Golden Corral and get some food. Take a Sunday afternoon nap. It ain't nothing wrong with that. But on Monday morning, are you able to get up and get in your word and get your devotional on? Are you able to get up and get your prayer on? Because when you go to work, it might be all hell waiting for you that day. But the problem is, is that we forget to do those things that God has, has put in place for us for our protection. And it says, as it's the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more faithfully as you see the day of Christ's return approaching. Are you that somebody? Or are you just everybody? Then some of us get to the anybody complex. Anybody can do that. They don't need me for that. Anybody can do that. They don't need that. Anybody can do that. But guess what? Anybody, everybody ain't made to do what anybody or somebody can actually do. But see, God says you were fearfully and wonderfully made. There's certain things that God put on the inside of you that I can't do. And because you're not in place and doing and walking in your more, I can't get my blessing. You holding me up. I need what you have and you need what I have because we are one body fitly joined together. But if we don't come because I'm just anybody. And then some people fall into that somebody complex. Somebody else going to get it. Somebody else going to do it. Somebody, somebody, somebody. Somebody do it except me. Y'all asking too much. You want me to get up and come to church? You want me to come to Bible study? You want me to give money? Uh, you're asking too much. But here's the thing. Has God given you the much? And are you being faithful stewards over the much that he said in his word that he gave you? Then 
you have those people like me that fall into the nobody complex. That you feel like you are nobody. Nobody notices you. Nobody needs you. Sometimes you feel like nobody loves you. I'm just a nobody. I'm, I'm sitting over here and, and nobody's really paying attention to me, so I hide behind. And I, and I don't do anything because I'm, I'm a nobody. I, I, I don't feel like God loves me. But let me hear. I'm here to tell you on this morning, uh, you are not a nobody, that you are a somebody, somebody that God has chosen, somebody that God has anointed, somebody that God has ordained, and he to do what it is that he's called you to do. But you got to get out of the nobody complex and understand that even if the devil tells you a, that you are nobody, just tell him, I, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody that can save anybody because God created me to make his praise glorious. Tell your neighbor, I'm not a nobody. Oh, you need to speak that. Somebody need to speak that. Wherever you might be on Facebook right now, you might need to speak that to yourself. I'm not a nobody. Because I was fearfully and wonderfully made. God created me for the much. He created me to do more. And now I just got to start doing more. Huh. How do you do more? Well, you got to follow the plan. The problem is, is that God will call us and we may hear the call, but we won't follow the plan. The Bible says that God sent his only begotten son. That for our sins, he had to die. There's going to be some times when you're not going to want to do what God says do it's gonna be scary it's gonna put you out there in a position where you've never been even Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane said look if this cup be taken from me then Lord let it be taken but here's where you gotta go he stuck to the plan he stuck to the plan he said but not my will but God your will here's the thing that's your plan God not my will but your will if your will be done then it'll be alright if your will be done then I'm gonna make it if your will be done it's simple it's simple it's simple it's simple but we can't get stuck in the method but we have to be driven by the meaning because see my path may be different from your path. My situation may be different from your situation. My struggle may be different from your struggle. But the simple fact of it is, is that we all have one mission. And that mission is to give God glory. That mission is to make it to the other side of through. That mission is to get to glory. That mission is to do what God has called us to do. It's the same mission. It might just be a different method. Don't get caught up in the method. But you got to get caught up in the meaning. The meaning of what it is you're called to do and we got to get back to doing it the bible says that in the end times says they will be wickeder and wiser and right now you got people in this world that are doing everything that they think they big and bad enough to do and don't mind showing you and telling you and the church is sitting there oddly quiet. It's amazing. Man opened back up the concert hall and we were there. 
God opened back up the church. We can't come to church for an hour and a half, two hours at the most. Because most church services now don't last that long. But we got to get back to what God called us to do. Or guess what? <laughs> what did it say? It said, uh, the master of the servant will come one day when he does not expect him. And at an hour, he does not know and will cut him into pieces. You were created to bear fruit. You were created to bear fruit. And watch this. Give first fruits. It, see, 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 see. Sometimes you can bear bad fruit. And the fruit on the tree comes off rotten. But the simple fact of it is we were designed to bear good fruit and to give God our first fruits. In other words, that means us walking in the excellence that God has called us to do. If your job is just to simply shake hands when they come in the door, then you better be the best handshaker there is. Because God didn't give you his scraps he gave you his best so why aren't we giving god our best because we're not following the plan jesus in that set of scripture provided good instructions that that entire if you read the entire book of of of, of luke 12 or the entire book of luke really god through Jesus lays out good instructions for his disciples on issues such as integrity, anxiety, convictions, problem solving, greed, jealousy, priorities, and simply just trusting God. Why these topics? Because Jesus intended to navigate life for you. If you look at Jesus' life, you have your plan. He laid out the plan for you and laid out how you are to deal with the plan. It's amazing how people will hosanna you today and crucify you tomorrow. But guess what, baby? You better get ready for it because to whom much is given... <laughs> much is required <laughs> because guess what <laughs> if God's entrusting you uh, with the power that he put on the inside of you you better understand that you're going to get persecuted for his name's sake so you better be ready to deal with it you got to have a little bit of thick skin and say for God I live and for God I'll die I will let nothing 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 separate me from the love of God. Jesus gave us those instructions. So first thing is. You got to know. The much. The second thing is. Know who you are. In Christ Jesus. Don't know who you are. In Kenneth. Y'all get that. Because we're trying to know who we are within ourselves. But through Christ Jesus, I was made a new creature. Through Christ Jesus, I was reborn. Through Christ Jesus, my sins were forgiven. Through Christ Jesus, I was made anew. Through Christ Jesus, I can do all things because he strengthens me. Through Christ Jesus, I'm more than a conqueror. Through Christ Jesus, I can, I'm, I'm, I'm more than what my fleshly body and this earth tells me that I am. But I got to walk in it. I got to talk it. I'm almost done. And we got to follow the plan. If we were to condense God's perspective on life into just a few 
simple words. He showed us in that chapter of Luke and just his life in general. First thing is decision making. We got to uh, know the truth and accept it. You decide if you're going to. That's the thing about God. He gave us free will. He's not going to make us do anything. He's not making us. Now, he might try to steer you in the right direction, but at the end of the day, you got to make that choice. The second thing is servitude. We must find a need, and we got to fill it. Y'all, we were not created for our own glory, but for his. We were created to do things. We are supposed to be his hands, his arms, his limbs, his mouthpieces. We have to start walking in that servanthood that Jesus Christ himself walked in when he carried his cross to Calvary. Determination. Huh. When we face a challenge and we got to meet that challenge because Christ on his way to Calvary, he was uh, persecuted. He was beaten. He had moments of doubt, but he had a mission and he had to be determined to get through that challenge in order to get to the cross because he know God created him to die in order for him to die so that our sins will be forgiven. So we got to give him praise that he was determined to get to the cross. We got to sacrifice. We got to lose our life in order to find it. Kurt Franklin got a song that says, right before I lived, I had to die. <laughs> Somebody didn't catch that because you got to die of you because you will stop you from doing what you're supposed to do. Because you will get lazy, but God will give you strength to keep moving. You, you, will, you will get complacent, but God will give you the next mission. You will get uh, 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 distracted, but God will keep you focused. You will be ready to give up, but God will give you strength. See, you cannot. You, you got to lose yourself. You got to be prepared. Preparation. You got to develop a plan and follow it. Well, he gave you the plan. The plan is right here. The problem is, is that we don't look through the manuscript. We don't look through the plan book to see what God has in store for you. But let me tell you something, baby. In the end, what it says is, I win! Your actions. We must discover God's will and obey it. Listen, there's one thing to believe, and then there's another thing to act on your belief. The Bible says faith without works is dead and alone. I can believe it, but if I'm not willing to walk it like I talk it, then I ain't doing nothing but sitting there yammering at the jaw. Because guess what? People are going to look at you. Oh, he talking, Christ. He talking this, but I saw him out there the other day doing this, 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 and this, and he know he won't supposed to. Guess what? When you profess your faith in Christ, people are watching. They watch how you handle it. You got to understand that you got a gift. You got to find that talent and share it. And here's the thing. Your gift is your gift and your gift looks good on you. See, you got to understand that there's small things that that God has put on in, inside of each and every one of us that that makes us special and unique that we got to tap into and God will show you what that thing is and walk in it. Your thing may be big, your thing may be small, but if you do it, the woman with the one talent gave all she had and that was more than what a rich man could have ever gave. 
the woman who just had the oil and the little piece of dough and didn't realize that she had more than enough already. She was just going to make enough for her and her son to eat and die. But God turned that thing around. That her cup running over. Look, don't look at your circumstances right now. But you got to look at what God is about to do. Because if you trust him enough to know that he can make the small, the big. And lastly. Durability. Whew. We must be tenacious and finish well. <laughs> Simply put, when my day is done and my time is over, and I don't want it to be no time soon, but if God called me tomorrow, I want him to be able to look at me and say, well done, thy good and faithful servant, enter into your rest. In other words, I got a journey. And my life's journey, I want to make it until the end. I want to do what God called me to do until the end. I know people don't like talking about it, but I know one day I want to be in paradise with my father. So that means I got to walk. I got to talk. I got to be tenacious. I got to keep going. I got a bus. I got to be durable. We've got to get back to the will and the plan of God. But we've got to get to a point to understanding that each and every one of us was called for more. We're living in a world that's a dying world. And it's a numbers game. And the enemy is trying to take as many people out with him as he can. But it's our job. It's our mission. I can talk to you, but I'm going to show it to you. I can't make you believe, but my job ain't to make you believe. One plant, one water, but God is going to give the increase. But my job is the plant. Your job is the water. God's going to take care of the rest. But if we're not in place to do what God has called us to do, if we're not in place to do what God has sanctioned us to do, then are you going to be like that unwise servant? <laughs> that when he comes back, he got to cut you into pieces. See, you can't just believe the good stuff and not the bad. The simple fact of it is, is that the Bible says that man's days are long and full of trouble. But guess what? When I know that I got the victory already, somebody ought to get excited. That means that I can walk this walk. I can talk this talk. I can fulfill my mission because I know that whatever goes on in my life, if I'm true to God and I'm true to the one that made me, true to the one that called me, that whatever it is that I go through, it was meant for my good. And if it was meant for my good it was meant for his purpose and if it's meant for his purpose then guess what it's going to be a blessing to somebody else including me for from everyone to whom much has been given much will be required the doors of the church are open. I need you to understand whether you're here in the sanctuary or whether you're listening out there. 
You've been created for much. And we can't expect somebody to do. We, 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 we can't expect somebody or everybody can't blame somebody when nobody did what anybody could have. I might can't sing the best, but I can give him praise. I might, might not be the best preacher, but I can lift up my hands. I might not be the best at this, but I can pray for others. There are things that he's called us to do. And if you know that you're not walking in what God has called you to do, it's time for us to get that thing right. Because... We don't know the day nor the hour. I had a friend of mine that called me on Friday and found out that one of our childhood friends had passed away. And all he did was take his dad home to visit their home, our hometown. 